Kyrie, a transliteration of Greek Kyrie, vocative case of Kyrios, Kyrios, is a common name of an important prayer of Christian liturgy, also called the Kyrie eleison, ancient Greek, Kyrie eleison translate. Kyrie eleison, lit. Lord, have mercy. In the Bible The prayer, Kyrie, eleison, Lord, have mercy derives from a biblical phrase. Greek eleison me kairi, have mercy on me, Lord, is the Septuagint translation of the phrase Hanani Yewa found often in Psalms 4 to 1, 6 to 2, 9 13, 25 to 16, 27 to 7, 30 to 10, 31 to 9, 51 to 1, 86 to 16, 123 to 3 In the New Testament the Greek phrase occurs 3 times in Matthew Matthew chapter 15 verse 22 The Canaanite woman cries out to Jesus Have mercy on me O Lord son of David Eleison me Kyrie he David Matthew chapter 17 verse 15 Lord have mercy on my son Kyrie eleison mo tun han Matthew chapter 20 verse 30 f, two unnamed blind men call out to Jesus, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. Eleison hamas Kyrie hyos David in the parable of the publican and the Pharisee Luke chapter 18 verses 9 to 14 the despised tax collector who cries out, Lord have mercy on me, a sinner, is contrasted with the smug Pharisee who believes he has no need for forgiveness. Luke chapter 17 verse 13 has epistates, Master, instead of Kyrios, Lord, Iesu epistata eleison hamas being less suggestive of the Kyrios, Lord, used as euphemism for YHWH in the Septuagint. There are other examples in the text of the Gospels without the Kyrie, Lord, e.g. Mark chapter 10 verse 46, where blind Bartimaeus cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. In the biblical text, the phrase is always personalized by an explicit object such as on me, on us, on my son, while in the Eucharistic celebration it can be seen more as a general expression of confidence in God's love. In Eastern Christianity Tauhi phrase Kyrie, eleison Greek, Kyrie eleison or one of its equivalents in other languages, is one of the most oft-repeated phrases in Eastern Christianity, including the Eastern Orthodox and Eastern Catholic Churches. The various litanies, frequent in that rite, generally have Lord, have mercy as their response, either singly or triply. Some petitions in these litanies will have twelve or even forty repetitions of the phrase as a response. The phrase is the origin of the Jesus Prayer, beloved by Christians of that rite and increasingly popular amongst Western Christians. The biblical roots of this prayer first appear in 1 Chronicles 16 verse 34. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. The prayer is simultaneously a petition and a prayer of thanksgiving, an acknowledgement of what God has done, what God is doing, and what God will continue to do. It is refined in the parable of the publican, Luke chapter 18 verses 9 to 14. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Which shows more clearly its connection with the Jesus prayer. Since the early centuries of Christianity, the Greek phrase, Kyrie, eleison, is also extensively used in the Coptic Egyptian Christian liturgy, which uses both the Coptic and the Greek language. In Western Christianity In Rome, the sacred liturgy was first celebrated in Greek. At some point the Roman Mass was translated into Latin, but the historical record on this process is sparse. Jungman explains at length how the Kyrie in the Roman Mass is best seen as a vestige of a litany at the beginning of the Mass, like that of some Eastern churches. As early as the 6th century, Pope Gregory the Great notes that there were differences in the way in which Eastern and Western churches sang Kyrie. In the Eastern churches all sing it at the same time, whereas in the Western church the clergy sing it and the people respond. Also the Western Church sang Christe eleison as many times as Kyrie eleison. In the Roman Rite Liturgy, this variant, Christe, eleison, is a transliteration of Greek Christe, 
Kyrie, eleison, or Lord, have mercy, may also be used as a response of the people to intentions mentioned in the prayer of the faithful. Since 1549, Anglicans have normally sung or said the Kyrie in English. In the 1552 Book of Common Prayer, the Kyrie was inserted into a recitation of the Ten Commandments. Modern revisions of the prayer book have restored the option of using the Kyrie without the commandments. Other denominations also, such as Lutheranism, use Kyrie, eleison, in their liturgies. Topic. Kyrie is section of the Mass Ordinary. In the Tridentine Mass form of the Roman Rite, Kyrie, eleison is sung or said three times, followed by a threefold Christe, eleison and by another threefold Kyrie, eleison. In the Paul VI Mass form, each invocation is made only once by the celebrating priest, a deacon if present, or else by a cantor, with a single repetition, each time, by the congregation, though the Roman Missal allows for the Kyrie to be sung with more than six invocations, thus allowing the traditional use. Even if Mass is celebrated in the vernacular, the Kyrie may be in Greek. This prayer occurs directly following the penitential rite or is incorporated in that rite as one of the three alternative forms provided in the Roman Missal. The penitential rite and Kyrie may be replaced by the rite of sprinkling. In modern Anglican churches, it is common to say or sing either the Kyrie or the Gloria in excelsis Deo, but not both. In this case, the Kyrie may be said in penitential seasons like Lent and Advent, while the Gloria is said the rest of the year. Anglo-Catholics, however, usually follow Roman norms in this as in most other liturgical matters. Topic. Text. Kyrie eleison Kyrie eleison Lord, have mercy Christe eleison Christe eleison Christ, have mercy Topic. Musical settings In the Tridentine Mass, the Kyrie is the first sung prayer of the Mass ordinary. It is usually but not always, part of any musical setting of the Mass. Kyrie movements often have a ternary Abba musical structure that reflects the symmetrical structure of the text. Musical settings exist in styles ranging from Gregorian chant to folk. Topic. Pronunciations The original pronunciation in medieval Greek was Siri, e -e -la dot ison Chris te -e -la dot ison, just when the Byzantine rite was in force. The transliteration of eleison as eleison shows that the post-classical Edicist pronunciation of the Greek letter eta, eta is used. Although the Greek words have seven syllables Kentucky re -e, e -lay -i -sun, pronunciations as six syllables Kentucky re -e, e -lay -i -sun, or five Kentucky -i -e -lay -i -sun, have been used. In ecclesiastical Latin a variety of pronunciations are used, the Italianate Kyrie e -lason Chris te e -lason, having been proposed as a standard. Text underlay in medieval and Renaissance music attests that Kentucky re -e -lay -i -sun, Five syllables was the most common setting until perhaps the mid-16th century. William Byrd's Mass for Four Voices is a notable example of a musical setting originally written with five syllables in mind, later altered for six syllables. The medieval poetic form Kyrial sometimes uses Kyrileis, an even more drastic four-syllable form, which is reduced to three syllables or even to Kyrilis in the German Liza, Laz. In renewed Roman Catholic liturgy, the terms aggiornamento (signs of the times) and resourcement (light of the gospel) figure significantly into the documents of Vatican II. The Church carries the responsibility of scrutinizing the signs of the times and interpreting them in the light of the gospel. Gaudium et spes. For Louis Bouyer, a theologian at Vatican II, wrote of the distortion of the Eucharistic spirit of the Mass over the centuries, so that. One could find merely traces of the original sense of the Eucharist as a thanksgiving for the wonders God has wrought. The general instruction of the Roman Missal notes that at the Council of Trent, manuscripts in the Vatican by no means made it possible to inquire into ancient and approved authors farther back than the liturgical commentaries of the Middle Ages. But traditions dating back to the first centuries, before the formation of the rites of East and West, are better known today because of the discovery of so many liturgical documents 7f. 
Consonant with these modern studies, theologians have suggested that there be a continuity in praise of God between the opening song and the praise of the Gloria. This is explained by Mark R. Francis of Catholic Theological Union in Chicago, speaking of the Kyrie, Its emphasis is not on us our sinfulness, but on God's mercy and salvific action in Jesus Christ. It could just as accurately be translated, O Lord, you are merciful. Note that the sample tropes all mention what Christ has done for us, not how we have sinned. For example, you were sent to heal the contrite, you have shown us the way to the Father, or you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness, leading to further acclamation of God's praises in the Gloria. In this same line, Hans Urs von Balthasar calls for a renewal in our whole focus at the Eucharist. We must make every effort to arouse the sense of community within the liturgy, to restore liturgy to the ecclesial plane, where individuals can take their proper place in it. Liturgical piety involves a total turning from concern with one's inner state to the attitude and feeling of the Church. It means enlarging the scope of prayer, so often narrow and selfish, to embrace the concerns of the whole Church and, indeed, as in the Our Father, of God. In the New Dictionary of Sacramental Worship, the need to establish communion is reinforced as it quotes the general instruction to the effect that the purpose of the introductory rites is to ensure that the faithful who come together as one establish communion and dispose themselves to listen properly to God's Word and to celebrate the Eucharist worthily. Germ. 46, emphasis added. Topic. In various languages In addition to the original Greek and the local vernacular, many Christian communities use other languages, especially where the prayer is repeated often. Topic. See also Jesus Prayer List of Greek phrases Topic. References Topic. Citations Topic. Sources Hoppen, Richard. Medieval Music. New York, W. W. Norton & Co., 1978. ISBN 0-393-09090-6. Pages 133-134 Gregorian Chants, 150 Tropes Topic. External links Catholic Encyclopedia Entry